throughout the many topics that I've covered in this course, we've often talked about planning, getting ready. So what I'd like to do now is summarize very quickly what are the key points to that getting ready. Specifically, what I'd like to think about is how to help someone before they enter the studio. You know, one problem I often see is someone wants to come make a video and they say, hey, professor, can I come use your lab and use the video, make a video? It's easy, right? And how do I tell them that it's not easy? How do I tell them to get ready? How do I tell them to get thinking in the correct way so that they get all of those details ready? We know what happens when they're not ready, when they think, hey, this is pretty easy. They come in, they don't have a plan, they take all day, they sit around, they try to do this and that, they mess things up, they end up giving up in the end. For often what I see is students think that making a video is easy because they saw it on YouTube. Lots of those people who make videos on YouTube spend a lot of time and they have a lot of experience to make it look easy, but it's not really easy. So how do we tell someone before they come to work with us or before they begin what are the things to pay attention? That's what I want to focus on in this unit. So I like to call this before entering the studio. Before you even come in, what are the key things to remember if you're already experienced? And what are the things to learn if you're not experienced? First of all, you need to know what is it you want to say with your video. It's easy to say, I want to make a video, but what's your goal? What's your point? What is the message you want to send? Who is it you want to reach? So we need to really keep that in mind. Who's going to see that video? Who's the audience? Does, does the audience have something special they need? Does the audience need a special key point or some kind of special information? Think about that. So these are the key elements to think of your topic. For example, if we have a professor come in and he wants to shoot a video for his class, maybe his key point is he wants to deliver the lecture. So when he's going to deliver the lecture, he wants to have a background, so he's going to use a green screen back here. He's going to replace that green screen with a background he likes, so he needs to think about it. What background does he want to use? He looks like he's dressed. Formally, why is he dressed formally? Because he wants to look like he's lecturing in class. He has a tie. He wants to look like he's giving a formal lecture. He wants these videos to last a long time, so he's going to try to produce them with much, as much quality as possible. He knows that he wants to show slides while he's talking, so he's going to organize and make his slides before coming to the studio. So that's a simple example. It seems easy, right? But a teacher that comes in and says, I want to make a video, and you say, well, are you standing or sitting? I don't know. Are you going to be dressing formally or informally? I don't know. What do you think? These are not helpful attitudes. So think about what you want, what is your goal, and what is your audience. Here in this example, we're using the studio. You can see the three-point lighting we're using and how we're helping that professor to present what he wants to present. He's really got everything clear in his mind. You know, it's pretty easy for you to just go onto YouTube and find videos and say, I want my video to look like that video. That's one good way to start. But the bad way to start is to say, I just want to make a video on my class, or I just want to make a video for a contest. Now, that's not very helpful. Sometimes somebody could be standing, sitting. In this case, the professor is giving a summary, so he decided to stand up. And here you can see the final result. This is where he was sitting down giving his lecture. And you can see he's decided he wanted to use the library background to look formal. He has his slides in a picture in a picture on the corner there. And he's dressed formally, but without his jacket this time. And so that's a real nice approach that he is very clear on, and that really helps to make a winning situation. Okay, we're going to look carefully now at the actual camera. And 
Cameras are all different depending on the brand. Even the same brand, for example, Sony, can be very different between models. However, there's a few things in common, or at least if they're not in common, they are important but may be accessed or used in slightly different ways. One thing is for sure that this is the camera here. This is a regular camera. This is, of course, a Sony camera. Sony tends to have the same layout, but then again, there are exceptions. I'm going to show you an exception in a little bit. Now, for these cameras, no matter what brand or what model, they're going to put the most important or the most commonly used features on the outside of the camera. Now, that doesn't mean that there's only the outside of the camera. There's, of course, also the menu system, and that menu system will have many different parts, and you will use certain kinds of controls to access the different parts of the menu. Now, the problem with using the menu is you have to go very deep, and you have to use many different parts of it, and you have to look on the screen to see something. Not very easy. So, again, the most common, the most important, or at least the most frequently used parts are going to be on the outside. So let's go over what are the basic parts or most commonly used, or most important, however you want to say it, parts of the camera by looking at the outside. Now the first thing in the camera that you're going to notice are the rings on the lens. Now these rings can be arranged differently or even have one ring and one ring does three different jobs, for example. But in this camera, it's nice and clear. One, two, three rings. The first ring is the focus ring. The second ring is the zoom ring. And the third ring is the f-stop for the aperture control that controls the amount of light coming in. So if we go ahead and we actually turn the focus, you'll see that we will change the focus. If we change the zoom, then you'll see that we're actually zooming in and out in our studio here. Now normally when we do try to get focus, we zoom all the way in and then adjust our focus and then zoom out to your shot. So again, when you want to get focus, you want to zoom in and you may have something there like a focus card is very helpful and then use the focus ring to get your focus and then zoom out for your shot. Never focus from the distance because when you focus from the distance it looks like it's focused. Um, that kind of looks okay but then when you zoom in you're going to find out you're out of focus. So always zoom in first, get your focus, then zoom out. Okay. And lastly is the f-stop or the aperture, and that is the amount of light. So here we're going to go all the way open, and then all the way closed until we get nothing, basically. Okay, now in other lessons we've talked about lights and how to get your lights set up and all of that. So we won't go into detail. We're just going to talk about the different parts of the camera right now. Now when I changed all those settings, that was the focus, the zoom, and the f-stop, you may have noticed on the screen that some things changed. So for example, when we use the zoom, you of course can see the zoom changes, but you can also see that there's a little indicator here and this indicator indicates zooming in and out. You see, W is wide, 
T is telephoto. Right, so that comes up. And when I don't zoom, when I don't move, it just disappears. When I change my focus, you can see that we're getting a change on this reading right here. And that's telling you what the distance to the subject is supposed to be, or at least the focal plane. So this is where we're getting focus at. So if right now I try to get focus here, 0.2 meters, well, my dummy is more than 2.0 meters away, so that's out of focus. So if I adjust my zoom in here a little bit so I can get a focus, pull my focus right about there, and then the number tells me 2.3 meters. Again, it disappears when you don't touch anything. So I'm touching the ring 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. Let me pull that back a little bit right around there. I think that's about how far that model is. That's about right. So when you change these rings, your readouts on the screen will also change. And lastly, the F stop, and you can see right on the screen is the F reading. So F 7.38, and then open it up wider and wider.